If you've been keeping up with this channel lately, you'll know I'm a huge fan of Ben 10, and would rather try to make sense of all the retcons and odd choices for story development than just hate on it and say it sucks. But sometimes there are things that happen that just don't make sense to me, or could have been done a lot better had they taken the time to put the extra effort in. I'm not saying they were horrible decisions, but accounting for even the smallest of details is what separates legendary animated shows from ones created just for entertainment and Ben 10 rides the line a little too tight. Before we begin, I want to say that I'm making a list of very specific and nitpicky events that happened in the show, rather than just general topics and drastic changes, or else the list would be something like, no retcons, keep the same art style throughout the entire series, make Ben's personality more consistent, stretch out Kevin's rehabilitation longer than two episodes, remove blocks entirely from the franchise, yada yada. No, these are just small instances that I feel could have been changed for the better, and all of these are 100% my personal opinion. With all of that out of the way, I'm Kuro the Artist, and I'm going to tell you the top 5 changes that would improve Ben 10. So one common fact known about the Omnitrix is it's pretty impossible to take off. Vilgax and Kevin needed a complicated form of technology to isolate the Omnitrix from Ben's DNA, as it was already merged with Ben's biology from being stuck on his wrist for so long. The feedback it gives is almost enough to push the device away entirely. This fact is later brought up in Alien Force, when Ben's parents find out his secret, for the second time, retcons, and Ben's dad tries to take Ben's Omnitrix away from him. The Omnitrix is attached to me, it doesn't come off. Oh. It's coming off all right. Okay, it's not coming off. Then it just randomly changed. Starting with season three of Alien Force, the franchise developed the trend of it just sliding off like an ordinary watch, not fused with Ben's DNA whatsoever. This was one of the details that really bothered me because they spent six seasons stressing about how the Omnitrix and Ben are now part of each other and all of that. And every time it happened, it got worse. Now, all someone has to do is just be the one who slams down the face plate for transformation, and now you're the one wearing it. Now, it can just fall off with no explanation. Now, you don't need any prior knowledge of the device whatsoever, and you could just take it off. Like nothing. The Omnitrix being a part of Ben is something that really resonated with the building blocks that the classic series laid out in the beginning. Seeing the Omnitrix slide off so easily takes away from the bond between Ben and his abilities, even if it is just a visual thing. If this was brought up to the writers, I could see them saying something like, it would be too complicated for the stories they wanted to tell if they had to show how complicated it was to take off every time. But it is those little details which I'm saying help add to the mythology and strengthen the universe. Even if you are going to have it fall off so easily from now on, at least explain how. When word got out about Ben 10,000 returning to the franchise, fans were thrilled until they were treated to Ultimate Aliens incarnation of his future, Ultimate Ben. I'd like to say, I really like Ultimate Ben, and I think, by default, he's my favorite version of Ben's future. The first one had a very bland personality, and aside from his transformations looking older, it didn't really add anything interesting. And I believe that making intentional fusions canon was a huge mistake. But that's a topic for another time, don't harass me in the comments asking me why. But most of the fans generally hate Ultimate Ben, and I can understand why. The entire gimmick that makes Ben 10 so lovable is all of the aliens Ben has, and how he continues to grow his arsenal. The idea of transformation was key, and Ultimate Ben takes that away. He has access to all of his alien abilities while remaining in human form. Honestly, not a bad power in retrospect. But taking away the ability for Ben to actually transform makes it seem boring when he does transform, in comparison. Well, he still transforms slightly as Ultimate Humongosaur. Get ready for the I would carry that slight transformation formula to all of his transformations. Similar to what Skur does when he creates parts of Ben's aliens to form necessary weapons, Ultimate Ben would only transform the necessary alien biology to carry out whatever power he was trying to expel. Here are a few concept sketches I did explaining the idea. Omniverse liked to tie up a lot of loose ends that happened between the end of Classic Series and Alien Force. Stuff like establishing a relationship between Gwen and Kevin before they met again in the first episode of Alien Force, so their relationship forward doesn't seem too forced. And explaining how the plumbers went from being an underground organization to an intergalactic police force. But one question we never got answered was, how did Ben take off the Omnitrix originally? Hints about the process were alluded to. I used to love the Omnitrix. It made me feel special. Remember how much trouble we had getting it off the last time? 
but would destroy all aliens in the flashbacks in the Omniverse, we see Ben continue to use the Omnitrix at least until age 11. I think that after the Time War arc was finished, there should have been one final episode centered around young Ben and his last adventure before deciding to take off the Omnitrix and live a normal life. It would have made the franchise come full circle, and seeing young Ben put the Omnitrix away could have been a great send-off for the fans saying goodbye to the series. Ultimate Alien was personally my favorite series. Like all series, it had its flaws, but I believe this one had the least amount of flaws. It was very daring when it came to the stories it told, and it had the most dedication to their story arcs when it came to the amount of episodes. Ultimate Alien was when the characters felt the most real and relatable, but when it came down to the fight scenes, they always just left me wanting more. One particular fight could have been the best fight in the entire series, hands down. Vilgax, who was now fused with the Dagon, giving him seemingly omnipotent abilities on a multiversal scale against Ben, armed with the Ultimatrix and the Sword of Ascalon, which also has reality-altering capabilities. There's so much you can do here, and this was one of the quickest fights of the entire show. I'm not saying the show had to pull a Dragon Ball Z and spend countless episodes on the same fight, but there's just too much that you could have done here to pass up. What if Ben went Ultimate Echo Echo and continued to wear the armor and sword? What if Vilgax threw Ben into space for payback and then flies after him, and the battle expands on a planetary scale? What if Ben used Ultimate Alien X? What if the battle was literally anything else other than... <laughs> Stabbed me! Such a wasted opportunity. Before I get to number one, here's a few runners up. I'm not going to go into too much detail with these ones, but if you want to know more, leave a comment below and maybe I'll elaborate. It's a mistake. It certainly is. Maybe you didn't hear us. Maybe you need to have your ears cleaned. The being that has caused me so much trouble. Who are you? I am Vilgax, and I have come for the Omnitrix. And, uh, I'm guessing you're not with the good guys. At the end of Omniverse, Ben and Rook travel to the beginning of their universe to stop Maltruin from creating it in his own image. There, they meet the Contamalia, the creators of their universe, whose fifth dimensional forms cannot be perceived by their primitive eyes. Therefore, they see the Contamalia as whatever they hold closest in their hearts. Rook sees images of his father, a hard-working farmer who changed his ways after his son and daughter chose to abandon their traditional lifestyle to help others. Maltruin sees images of himself, emphasizing his egotistical nature, mirroring his plan to rewrite reality under his rule, and Ben, for the past six years being guided by the man considered to be the best plumber in the galaxy, fighting alongside a man closer to him than his own father, the one who taught him about life, ethics, and how to be a loyal and compassionate leader. Ben sees a giant f***ing smoothie. You see, Omniverse like to present ideas that I would argue are genius and so unique and exciting, and just carry them out in the worst ways. If Omniverse had the chance to take things seriously or tell a joke, they would most likely go with the joke. I can't believe my last words are snot This isn't always the case, no, don't get it wrong. But it's enough to flat out ruin a lot of good potential stories and moments. Things that may seem funny on paper, like a blue space duck whose name is literally Captain Rad Prophet Danger Trouble Dudesman, may render a chuckle in the writer's room. 
But after the process of actually scripting, voicing, animating, and releasing these little writer room jokes, they become oversaturated and lose their charm, and just come off annoying, and sometimes, dare I say it, cringy. The idea of Ben seeing a giant smoothie as his pure-hearted vision does seem funny, but that's it. Once you actually go through with the idea and see it in an animated episode, is it really that funny? It's like if you're sitting around with your friends and you're going like, hey man, wouldn't it be funny if, but you never actually do the thing you guys are joking about? Omniverse actually does the things they are joking about, but the audience can't connect to that. Having Ben see Grandpa Max as his Contamalia vision would have been such a powerful moment. They could have spent more time in it and really weigh the audience into the gravity of the situation they're in. But no, they decided to spend their screen time with an alien mole with a flaming mustache. Great job, guys. If you agree with my points, you may enjoy how I would do my own take on a Ben 10 series. So I encourage you to check out Five Years Later, a crossover continuation of the show hoping to give it the justice it never got, but definitely deserved. You can find the comic for free on CurrowTheWebsite.com, which is also mobile friendly. Thank you for checking out my video. You can keep up to date with all of my projects on my social media, or join my Discord, which currently has over 1,100 members full of passionate fans. And as always, all right, I wrote this song for a purpose To get the aliens to the grind And with the Omnitrix overloaded I always lose my mind Oh yes, I always come for action To save Ben all the time Now let's get the party going With Ben and Rook this time It's R&B, yo, Rook and Ben Yo, all the way, yeah It's R&B, yo, Rook and Ben Yo, all the way, yeah